You know, throughout the pandemic, we've heard that if we can just get to herd immunity, we could start to get back to our normal lives. And that's because enough people would have antibodies from the vaccine or from being infected. But now a new study from USC suggests that probably won't happen. Why is that? Well, joining us now to talk about the study is Professor Neeraj Sood, the director of the COVID initiative at the USC Schaefer Center. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Now, the study found a large number of people in LA County had the antibodies nearly a year ago, and yet we still had COVID surges from Delta and Omicron. So how does that change the thinking about herd immunity? So I think what the study shows is that back in April, about 72% of adults in LA County had some sort of protection from COVID from vaccination or uh, from prior infection. But despite that, we had these huge Delta and Omicron surges. And basically what that says is that we're, it's gonna be very difficult or impossible to hit herd immunity or a, or a state where we won't have future surges. And the reason why we had these surges is because the virus changed. It mutated and it became much more transmissible. So the R0 or the basic reproductive number of the virus increased. And the second problem was that the virus started infecting those who were vaccinated. So we had many breakthrough infections and also many reinfections among those who had already been infected with COVID before. And if that happens, reaching herd immunity is becomes impossible. I mean, that is disappointing to hear. It's just this uphill battle. Um, so you're essentially saying we just have to accept the fact that we will consistently have these COVID surges then? So I think it is very likely that we will continue to have these COVID surges. And we need to now start focusing our attention on how can we minimize the harm from these surges. Uh, and one way to do that might be uh, to expand access to the new treatments, which can dramatically, like the, the new Pfizer drug, can reduce the risk of hospitalization from COVID by 90%, provided you take the drug within five days of symptom onset. Uh, Professor, how, how do racial disparities play a part in all of this? So what we found was uh, that in the lower income neighborhoods, the rate of infections was much higher than the higher income neighborhoods. And that probably explains why we've seen, you know, many more deaths from COVID in lower income neighborhoods compared to higher income neighborhoods. Uh, we also find that vaccination rates for blacks and for lower income households have lagged behind vaccination rates uh, for higher income households or whites. Uh, so we need to, going forward, uh, address those disparities. So Neeraj, what do you think the future will look like then? So I think the future will look like uh, uh, more surges in the future, but hopefully you know, much less uh, hospitalizations or deaths in the future because uh, vaccinations and prior infections do protect uh, against deaths and hospitalizations. And as I said, uh, if the new treatments are rolled out, uh, then uh, those new treatments will further reduce uh, hospitalizations and deaths from COVID. So maybe ultimately this might become, you know, like the flu or other endemic diseases. Yeah, moving toward the endemic. Okay, Professor Sue, thank you so much for joining us in the time today, and we'll talk to you again soon. Keep up the good work. Thank you for having me.